we'll, we'll get back to the to the West because I feel like we're talking a lot about the Sixers and some of these guys and shit. Yeah. What what would you do with the Jazz going into this offseason? season? I think they're because I think I think it was a fireable offense to lose to the Clippers when you're the the higher seed and also they're without Kawhi. So. I agree with you 100%. And the fireball offense is for Quinn Snyder, who I think is a great coach. Great. But also at this point, he's been there five, six years. It's like, what is your ceiling with this team? What do you do? But they took the, I feel like they took the leap. I know it didn't look like it or whatever. And then last year it was similar. What They got bounced right before the Western Conference Final. They didn't get to the Western Conference Final. They lost to the, to the Nuggets. And I think they, they lost lo- to the Nuggets, yeah. And Game 7, and was, that was Game 7 when Conley missed that three, right? Yes. In the bubble. That was a sick game. But I mean, no, that was Mitchell that missed the three. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. You're, no, you're, it was, you're it was, right. It was you're Conley right. because yes, yeah, yeah. But I'm talking Conley. about it was uh, it was Mitchell and Murray had that iconic. They both dropped like 50 they went games, back and so you're yes, right. yeah, yeah, they lost great the game by the way. Yeah, yeah. Insane. That was probably the best game of the bubble. One of the best. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's justified. Like I don't think you fight. I think you give it another because they're right there. I'm mm-hmm. telling you, they're right there. And the Clippers don't get enough credit. P- it, I, I, that's another reason why I'm cheering so hard for them because I feel like that'd be the greatest rise from demise, right? You lose to the Mavericks. Like I'm talking about the Clippers last year to the Mavericks. Luka has his coming out party, plays with the sprained ankle. You can't stop him. He beats you. Boom. All this talk. Uh, Kawhi, uh, PG, Pandemic P, whatever. They come back this year, go to the Western Conference Finals. I mean, they're, they're yeah, all- but they beat the Mavericks last year. They lost to the Nuggets of three one. The Nuggets, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. But still, they were they, they got a lot well, of shit Luka, for that Luka series. Luca had that big. Luca had like forty a game. He was averaging. <laughs> they were calling Luca. Yeah. The the Clippers pops. Right, right, right. They had to come. That's what I mean. Like yeah. they got a lot of shit for that. And then series. even this year, they beat them twice in L. A. Right. They're up two zero. Full strength. They're going back to Dallas. Mm-hmm. But they overcame that. Right. Just like the Bucks overcame that loss to the Heat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They had a chance to sit out and bypass the heat but they're like no we're gonna play we're gonna win so we can get the heat in the first round and get over that and i respect teams that do that you face yeah your because the clippers weakness. did that to avoid playing to facing the lakers mm-hmm. right they're like yo we wanted the Mavs because i remember that was a big ass talking point like yo be careful what you wish for exactly but I, I but how where where they were last year in the bubble compared to where they are now and that's why I'm cheering for them so hard. And obviously, the Kawhi, the lo- the loss of Kawhi is like going to hurt them. Mm. Um, but I- I'm really cheering for them. And I think if they have Kawhi, I think they're the best team left. They have everything. That's fair, and especially with man becoming that that role player. Who I, I think it's fair to say you could kind of count on him now. Not to give you forty, like that was a career game. He's not going to have that. He's again. solid though, and his conferences, his confidence is at an all time yeah. high right now. He, he's 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 going to get. Guy, paid. That's another guy who's reliable. Was exactly. what I was getting at. Exactly, but in terms of the Jazz, sorry, I got off topic. I, I think you keep them for another year or so. I honestly do. Um, Clarkston, six man of the year. So what they're missing is another shot creator. You got to get someone that's going to help Mitchell out. When Mitchell doesn't have it going and Mitchell's struggling, the Jazz, you know, they they put in Clarkson and Clarkson somewhat carried the load. But he's he's not creating plays for other guys. He's creating for himself. Mm. You need a guy in there like how the Bucks went out and got Drew Holiday. That's the biggest pickup probably in the last three years was for the Bucks because I think if the Bucks don't have Drew Holiday, the Nets would have beat them even with – well, that obviously goes without saying because they don't have enough star power. But they brought that guy over, a, a, a playmaking shot creator – to help Giannis out down the stretch. Mm-hmm. Because if you know, remember last year, he was trying to play point guard and he was exerting all this energy. And, you know, they got someone like that yeah. to come in and help. So you need a playmaking shot creator to come in and help, you know, when Mitchell doesn't have it going. But the Jazz are right there. I don't think they did anything wrong. That pickup for D Wade, I think, was good. You get a basketball mind in the front office. He's an ambassador for them. And, you know, he's working in the front office. I, I think you give it another two, three years. But what's the rush? Like, what, what would you do? You know, you break that team up and then what, start from scratch? Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? That's true. And you especially the- if you look at, like, the landscape of the West, though, it is, like, super competitive. Chris Paul, after this year, I think if they end up winning the championship, he probably resigns with the Suns. Yeah. I, I don't see him going. Even if they got this far, I don't see him leaving. Mm-hmm. Their numbers, like their projecting numbers, Sports Track is a really cool website. They kind of do a lot of like projections for where your contract might be. Mm-hmm. They're saying like three for 100 for Chris Paul at 37 years wow. old. That's that's, that's a lot. You yeah. know, that might be something that you're going to pay for it on the front end. Like mm-hmm. we were talking about before, like the back end is going to be like, yeah, Damn, like those baseball contracts, right? Absolutely. You give you give Cano a ten year contract. Those first five years are like, all right, yo, we're, I'm gonna have an all star second baseman. Mm-hmm. Those last five, it's like he's been on like three different teams now. Yeah. You know? So it's you're paying for it up front, but on the back end, it's gonna suck. 
with the Jazz, I think I think what you said is true. They need another guy who could create their own shot for others as well, mm-hmm. and another yeah, guy who's maker. reliable. Absolutely, because Gobert, he, he, the center like him, gets taken out of series, right? Center like Andre Drummond, same thing. Aiton, on the other hand, is a guy who's very versatile and he could play. He's not a liability for you. Yeah. Anthony Davis, not a liability mm-hmm. for you when they're out there. And if you go small, he's going to make you pay. His offensive game is respectable enough where you could throw him the ball in the post. He can get you a bucket. He's got a little mid-range jumper he can knock down. The pick and roll he's effective in. He's a good defender around the rim. You know, he, 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 he has a solid, solid game where he's going to make you pay if you try to go small against him.